Good morning, everybody. Ken Kramer, Diving Safety Officer for California State Parks. Our divers engage in a variety of activities to help uh, manage our park stewardship of both the submerged resources, just like we do on land. So our divers engage in public safety, uh, rescue, recovery, uh, and, and search work. And then we do underwater science that involves uh, submerged resource management for cultural and natural resources. We help out with our interpretive and education programs and some light maintenance. So being able to, to do park work underwater is a fantastic experience and a great way to uh, help manage our incredible state parks, all 280 of them. Wow, thanks Kenny for sharing that information with us. You're welcome. Uh, so Kenny, we have a video here that we'd love to share with you if you could just tell us a little bit about what's going on in this video with the california state parks dive team that would be amazing sure whenever we're out in the field working we try to multitask so at this project we're both doing training and we're helping out with our environmental education program but we also went and looked at some submerged cultural resources that were affiliated with the lakes recreational period of a resort that's nearby here to sugar pine so what we're seeing are the remnants of a historic pier those are probably deck pieces they were milled lumber 25 30 feet long that are uh, probably about 70, 80 years old and part of the historic cultural fabric of our submerged resources in the lake. So we go out and we record these, we measure them, we add them to the department's inventory of our cultural resources so we can fill the gap on the knowledge of our heritage as Californians. Wow, Kenny, thank you for explaining that to us. Um, just for your guys' information, this is a map of California and all of those little words on there are all different state parks um, in the California State Park System. And here's a map of Lake Tahoe and Sugar Pine Point State Park is over on the west shore. Um, it's a beautiful place um, with the campground and an ermine mansion and a lake shore. Um, I just wanted to let you guys know a little bit more about Below the Blue. It's Lake Tahoe's Litter Crisis. Um, is a partnership between the California State Parks, local agencies, nonprofits, schools, the Girl Scouts, private businesses, and other caring citizens who all want to make Lake Tahoe litter free. Seth and Monique are two divers from MTS that they have dedicated their time for the last eight years to removing garbage from under the surface of Lake Tahoe. Down here today in Tahoe at Sugar Pine, checking out our new awesome communications that State Park has, testing everything, see how it feels, how it works, checking our buoyancy here. Um, and man, it just feels so good. The water's warming up, beautiful day, it's just really nice. 61 degrees under here, absolutely beautiful. It's weightless, it's stunning, the visibility is lovely. It's just good to be in the water. We're gonna see if we can find some trash and hang out with some great dive buddies today. And we're happy to be here. Oh, the wow, that sure looks beautiful, you guys. Um, and I just also wanted to tell you a little bit about being an environmental scientist. Um, one way that environmental scientists protect natural resources is by removing invasive or non-native species from the environment. And I'll show you a picture of Eurasian water milfoil, which is one of the invasive species that Seth and Monique have um, removed from the lake. Here's a picture of it right here. Um, and they have worked many years to remove invasive species like this from Lake Tahoe. While they were doing this, they found a ton of garbage under the surface of Lake Tahoe. And here's a few slides of some of the trash that they found. What are some of the things that you're noticing in those images there, Silver? Oh man, there's tons of plastic, food waste, ropes, fishing line, all sorts of recreation trash, tennis balls, kids toys all sorts of things end up in the lake. And we don't notice that it would be like that by looking at the surface because it looks so beautiful and clear, but under the water, there is a lot of trash. Um, I'm gonna show you guys a little video of um, Seth and Monique picking up some trash. Hey, I'm Seth Jones with Marine Taxonomic Services and Below the Blue, and we're professional divers um, that really care about the environment and cleaning up. We work up and down the West Coast. Um, in Tahoe, we specialize in invasive species control and debris removal, and we are so dedicated to this lake and love it so much, we just wanna keep moving it forward um, 
<laughs> Clean it up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, I'm Monique Rydell Fortner. I work with Seth Jones as part of Marine Taxonomic Services and Below the Blue. We definitely love the lake and have been so fortunate to be able to work here for the last eight years and hopefully many more to come. Um, I live in the water. I love the water. I eat and breathe the water if possible. And we're just fortunate to be here with everybody today and make a dream come true. We're finding the trash down there. It's so awesome um, to be able to pull it up. Uh, we're under a pier today and a lot of these public piers we find just a lot of sunglasses, um, sometimes clothing articles like shoes or shorts or towels, um, fishing gear too. We found several lures, um, crayfish pot, um, also some boat parts down there, just kind of the stuff you'd expect that people lose off, off their boat there. Um, some dog toys, that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Um, today we found a scuba mask and snorkel, I think from some kids that were out there yesterday. And um, it's really beautiful. And you can see the stuff from the surface actually quite nicely. There's a lot of fish out there. Um, it's kind of sad to see the trash littering up such a nice place and we're happy to, happy to get it out of there. Oh. oh, we even found someone's phone down there today. Man, yeah. it's sad. We've been able to pull up, uh, well, we pulled up dozens of phones, but we've been able to return a few that we've dried and got to turn back on and found their owner. Um, so that's always really fun to be able to do that. We just returned a couple kayaks the other day that we found floating in the storm. So the owners were super stoked to get them. My favorite thing about diving is just exploring new areas, finding um, really cool objects underwater that we can help remove. I love diving in remote areas where you got to take a float plane out. You think about how no other divers possibly have ever been there or very few. So we've been really fortunate in our work to work a lot of logistically challenging areas. And it's really rewarding. Gosh, um, probably 25 years ago, I hit the water, got my open water certification and fell in love with it. Um, I went to college with the Joneses and we've known them for a long time and it's just it's been an incredible series of just amazing opportunities from collecting trash to doing some of the environmental work that we're able to do and um, I just can't say enough about what we're able to do. Um, Excellent great job thanks so much for sharing that video with us Silver. Well next we get to talk to Seth and Monique in person because they are here with us we're keeping our distance because of COVID, so I'm on one side at Sugar Pine and they're over on the pier. Um, but let's see if they can hear us. Seth and Monique, can you hear me right now? Hey guys. Hi, Monique. Hi, Seth. Yeah. I have Hi. some questions. Are you up for answering some questions for us? Yeah. Okay, I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit about why you like to dive in Lake Tahoe. Oh, wow. Well, it's beautiful here. And I mean, the geographic structure underneath is stunning. There's lots of wildlife. Um, it's just, it's absolutely gorgeous. We are so lucky to be able to spend the amount of time that we do here in the lake. Oh. Yeah, I can't ask yeah. for a, a nicer area to work. <laughs> Amazing that we actually get paid to be up here. <laughs> yeah. And so some of the things you work on are removing invasive species and then that led into removing garbage. Is that correct? Yeah, most of our work up here has to do with controlling the invasives that are in Tahoe, the Eurasian water milk oil you mentioned, and curly leaf pondweed, as well as the Asian clam. Um, and during that process, any days off, um, when we started, we would just start collecting trash, and it's just so rewarding to be able to pull out garbage cans and stuff every day. That's great. I'm so glad that you did that, because for me, when I look at the lake, it looks so clear and clean, so it's hard to believe that all that garbage is under the surface. Um, can you guys tell me how long you've been diving for? So I've been diving for about 25 years now. Hard to say, hard to believe that. Um, yeah, 25 yeah, years. About the same for me too. I started in high school. My parents were marine biologists and my brother's a marine archeologist. So it kind of ran in the family. So I started diving, um, I think ninth grade maybe. Wow. And working with my dad in Alaska um, and other areas in Washington diving. Um, and now probably between us, we probably have over 15,000 dives. Um, so yeah, it's just a second nature to be underwater. Yeah, that's really impressive. Um, coming from someone who's never dove before, I can't imagine that seems so cool. Um, can you tell me what kinds of trash you have removed from Lake Tahoe in particular? If we 
ranges from recreational trash to construction material, fishing debris, um, historic. We find a lot of historic items. Those we leave in the lake, of course. Uh, we have some things here that we'll be able to show you here briefly of what we pulled up today. Um, boat great. parts also, a lot of boat related. Um, yeah, it's kind of across the board, everything you can imagine. I mean, we found weird things like kielbasa sausage in the wrapper <laughs> still, um, <laughs> to ammunition, to, um, you know, all like silencer for a gun, you know, just real weird stuff. Lots of fishing, lots of recreational material, um, just anything you can imagine. Okay, this is all stuff we pulled up today, mostly recreational, some fishing related um, stuff. There's an iPhone. Um, over here are some items that we just brought from other days. There's some recreational. This here is a lot of construction debris items. We find tons and a lot of it's good usable. We find a lot of good usable fishing gear, carabiners, straps, all kinds of stuff. Wow, thank you for showing me that. So it looks like you found fishing trash, um, recreation garbage. Did you find any food and beverage garbage? There's a couple glass bottles here. Um, some bait jars, there's a beer can, Bud Light can, um, some food wrappers. Wow. <laughs> can you tell me about how much trash you think you've removed from Lake Tahoe? On average over the years, so we've, we've always, we kept it for a while until we had too much, our garage was full. Um, we we're storing it at other locations as well. So we started taking stuff to the dump and recycle center, selling items as well. Um, but we averaged uh, um, about a ton a year, um, and this year we've already pulled out over three tons of material so far. There's a lot of year left. And more recently we've been saving more of it to um, help with Below the Blue and Art projects as well. That's right. So you've saved a lot of really cool stuff to use for garbage art projects to help raise awareness about the issue of litter in Lake Tahoe. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, Below the Blue is a partnership um, that is hosting an art exhibit, and we're hoping that it'll be at the Boatworks this fall. It'll be COVID dependent. Um, and if you're interested in participating in Below the Blue by making an art piece or any finding out any more information, um, you can contact us at info at belowtheblue.org. Um, I have a couple things just to say about what the trash does to freshwater ecosystems. Um, oftentimes we find plastic in the water and all this garbage is not good for the native plants that plants and animals that live in the lake. And sometimes the animals might think that they should eat it or um, the crawdads like to break it up into tiny little pieces um, or they might get caught in it and hurt themselves. Um, also Lake Tahoe is a source of drinking water. So we do want to keep it clean for all that yummy drinking water that we have up here. Um, and lastly, a lot of us like to recreate in Lake Tahoe. We like to swim or boat or just enjoy its serene qualities. And we don't want to splash in the trash. So it's really important to have our lake stay clean. Um, and then I have one last question for you too. What are some things that the rest of us can do to make Lake Tahoe a better place? Um, things like, like the take care campaign, um, batting down the trashes, <laughs> like if you're out in the boat, um, racing around, just make sure your stuff's batting down. Um, I mean, accidents happen. If you can, you know, your sunglasses fall in on the pier, just hop in and grab them. Um, the water's nice. Yeah, it's beautiful. A lot of times you can see the trash just right off the pier. I mean, it's less than 10 feet, so super easy to pop in. Most of you guys have snorkels, masks, and nice refreshing dip, and you clean up the lake as well. So just be aware of your surroundings and aware of what you've got, and make sure you pack out what you pack in. That's really important. And the reusable containers, you know, we find a lot of water bottles, of course, and um, cake cups, that kind of thing. And we also find reusable containers down there, but if you notice something go in, try to figure out a way to get it back out. It's not that hard. Awesome, yeah, so pack it in, pack it out leave no trace and um, be responsible with your things. Um, use reusable items. All those things are really great ideas. Um, another thing I think we can do is probably work a little harder to keep our shore, near shore and over the water construction sites clean because it seems like you have found a fair amount of construction materials 
And for those boat owners out there, make sure your boats are securely fastened to your buoys when a windstorm is um, forecasted. Um, and those good. are all, go ahead. And to check your mooring chains every year. So many boats sink out here because of bad mooring chains. And it's an extremely easy, cost-effective solution. Just check them, replace awesome. them. Yeah, and be aware. And so there's all these things that each one of us can do to help make a difference and make Lake Tahoe litter free. And I wanted to personally thank Seth and Monique for their countless hours that they have dedicated to making Lake Tahoe a better place for all of us. And you guys are a great example of how each one of us can do our own part to make a difference. So remember to leave every place you visit better than you found it. And you can make a difference. Leave no trace, pack it in, pack it out. Um, I would also like to thank um, and give special thanks to the State Parks Dive Team and California State Parks Ports Program for all of their support today um, and their outstanding dedication to keeping Lake Tahoe and all of our public lands litter free. This is just a summary of some of the garbage that they have found and taken out of the lake. Um, they did um, data collection on every piece of trash that they picked up out of the lake, where it was, what it was, how many of them there were. And so you can see that there's a whole lot of different types of trash that we can address to stop the problem. And this is a um, flyer for the Below the Blue Lake Tahoe's Litter Crisis um, Garbage and Art Science Exhibit coming soon to Tahoe City. Um, Thank you all for your participation in this event, for your great patience while we are going through all of the technical difficulties. And um, thank you for your time. I hope you go out and make this world a better place. My name is Silver Hartman and I hope you have a great day. Thank you.